breaking news. The driver charged in a deadly crash that killed a Waltham police officer and a national grid worker is being arraigned right now. Let's listen in. Failure to stop for police. Negligent operation of a motor vehicle. Larceny of a motor vehicle. Armed robbery. Assault with a dangerous weapon. Two counts of manslaughter. Leaving the scene of an accident after causing personal injury and death. Two counts of leaving the scene of an accident after causing property damage. Two counts of assault with a dangerous weapon. A marked lanes violation and unlicensed operation of a motor vehicle. Mr. Simon, the court enters a plea of not guilty on your behalf. The court appoints the Committee for Public Council Services to represent you. You're responsible for the $150 legal fee. It does not need to be paid today. You should make efforts to pay it by the next court date. Commonwealth. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, at the outset, uh, Commonwealth is going to move to amend uh, the citation issued by the Massachusetts State Police to reflect the date and time of the offense to be December 6th, approximately 4 15 p.m. Mr. Bailey. Good morning, Your Honor. Arthur Bailey for Mr. Simon. The uh, defense does not object to that motion. The roll motion to amend is allowed without objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Chris Taylor for the Commonwealth. On the issue of bail, the Commonwealth has filed a motion pursuant to 276, Section 58A for pretrial detention, as there is probable cause to believe that the defendant has committed a qualifying offense and no conditions of pretrial release would assure the safety of the community. Here, Mr. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, approximately uh, December 6, 2023, uh, this being yesterday at approximately 4.15 p.m., the Waltham police responded to the area of Top Pond Road on a report of a motor vehicle crash uh, involving four vehicles and with two critically injured persons. Those injured persons included Waltham police officer Paul Tracy and national grid worker Roderick Jackson. Uh, Your Honor, this investigation revealed <coughs> excuse me, that the defendant was uh, operating an older Ford F-150 traveling eastbound on Tom Pond Road. As, as he was traveling eastbound, uh, this defendant veered his vehicle to the right and then suddenly to the left in an apparent attempt to make a U-turn. In so doing, he positioned his car directly in front of the vehicle traveling behind him, a Jeep Wrangler, which caused the Jeep to collide with the driver's side of his vehicle causing the defendant's vehicle to rise up off of uh, two wheels and then slam back down. That having occurred, the defendant abandoned his attempt to make a U-turn and continued eastbound uh, on Taunton Pound Road in an apparent attempt to flee the scene of that crash. Uh, video from the area reveals that ahead of the defendant on Taunton Pound Road, you can see a work site uh, being conducted by National Grid. That work site was uh, fixed with orange cones, orange signs, and yellow flashing lights to alert drivers of the site. Uh, the, the defendant continued traveling towards the work site, and in fact, when he came upon the site, veered between um, what appeared to be a National Grid truck and a backhoe, and in between those two uh, vehicles was a trench where the National Grid workers were working. Officer Paul Tracy was standing in that vicinity <coughs> directing traffic, as well as there was a national grid worker, Mr. Roderick Jackson, who was also standing near with Officer Tracy. This defendant veered his vehicle into that direction, striking both Officer Tracy and Mr. Jackson. After doing that, crashing into the vehicles on scene, including the national grid truck, this defendant exited his vehicle and fled. He fled to the local resident's home where he began banging on the, uh, the door. As that was occurring, a Waltham police officer arrived at that scene and uh, ordered the defendant uh, to, to uh, submit. The defendant turned on the officer, brandishing a knife, and uh, with that knife, entered the officer's cruiser and essentially stole the cruiser and led the police on another high-speed chase. Uh, other officers were responding, attempted to stop this defendant uh, several times. Each time, the defendant would veer his car into the oncoming officers. Uh, he made several turns uh, throughout Waltham. Ultimately, uh, 
crashing uh, the vehicle where he was subsequently apprehended. Uh, both Officer Tracy and Mr. Jackson were transported to local hospitals where they uh, succumbed to their injuries and were declared deceased, Your Honor. Uh, based on these facts, Your Honor, the Commonwealth believes that there are no conditions of pretrial release that could assure the safety of the community, and I'm asking the court to detain the defendant pending trial uh, pursuant to 276, Section 58. Mr. Zinnemann, do you wish to be heard with respect to probable cause? No, Your Honor. Um, we would agree that there is probable cause. We reserve our rights to a 58 day hearing. Um, I will inform the court that we are going to make an internal transfer to Linda Dantas um, in our Lowell office. Um, so she will be handling the case, the case during the pendency of this case. Um, she indicated that she is available on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday to address 58A. Um, Both parties are requesting a continuance? Yes, Your Honor. No objection to good cause? No, Your Honor. The court finds uh, probable cause for a qualifying offense and that good cause exists to not conduct a 58A hearing on the date of the defendant's initial appearance. Madam Clerk, uh, either on Wednesday or Thursday, your defendant is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. being December 6th at the time of 4.15 p.m. That motion is allowed. We've been watching 54-year-old Peter Simon arraigned in Waltham District Court. He is the man accused of hitting and killing Waltham police officer Paul Tracy. And we also learned the name of the national grid worker who was also killed, Roderick Jackson, a 36-year-old man from Cambridge. Um, that suspect, Peter Simon of New Hampshire, is facing a long list of charges. He is going to be held until his next court appearance, which will be on December 14th. We will have continuing coverage on this story throughout the day today on WBZ and on WBZ.com.